Seems like we've been indoors an awfully long time with this lockdown and as you can see out of my window the sun has finally decided to shine, the weather's beautiful, it's time to get outside and paint. So I've got my Soltec easel here which is effectively a studio in a box, I'll show you. It, um, all my paints fit in here, drop my brushes in the side and I've got my collapsible mild stick, so I'm ready to go. Now, when I go out painting, I add a couple of colours to my normal palette. Um, I like sap green, and I also use cobalt blue outside. Um, both of these, one is an alkyd paint, the other is a fast dry oil paint. Both of them essentially are faster drying oil paints. I also have some alkyd gel. So, and my white is a fast drying white. What this helps with when I'm outdoors is, and this one too is an alkyd, my raw umber. What this helps me with when I'm outdoors is drying time so that I can overpaint very quickly because these paints start to set up extremely quickly in sunshine. So you can put down your first few layers fast and then knowing that they will tack up, begin to dry and you can overpaint them fairly promptly afterwards. So there's paints and a knife, all my brushes all ready to go. And this fits neatly into my backpack, which as you can see, I have my paper, my thinners, and a little portable pot, and tear-off pallets. Now, if you're not familiar with these tear-off pallets, uh, they're wonderful because they allow you to put all of your reservoirs of paint along the glued edge, all your little blobs of paint, and then when you've done a lot of mixing, you can simply tear it off like so, and leave, still leave all of your paints along that top edge. Put this in a nice bag that you have brought with you to bring your garbage home with and you're set to go. You've got a clean palette again. So these are super lightweight. Now I've chosen to make mine a bit stiffer like a real rigid palette by taping a bit of uh, extra cardboard on the back of it and I cut a thumb hole in it too with a craft knife. So it's effectively just like an arm palette, except that it's all disposable. I don't have to mess around trying to clean the palette outdoors. All of it fits nicely in that rucksack I showed you and goes on my back. And I've, got a, I've got an immediately portable studio. Now, what am I going to paint on? Well, you've got a couple of options. This is linen glued onto uh, foam core, so it's super lightweight, so it doesn't weigh anything at all. Uh, or alternately, if I want to work a little bit bigger, I have a piece of foam core here, which is again weighs a couple of ounces, it's about half inch thick, and to that I can tape loose pieces of linen, which see there's linen which I have toned a raw umber, a very pale raw umber colour and I can tape those onto my board and the nice thing about doing this is that you can take four or five pieces of pre-cut linen so that you can you can you know You've got one super lightweight pack of 
what could potentially be five paintings. The other nice thing about them is you can cut them down afterwards before you mount them on a board if you get a nice result and want to keep the sketch that you've made. So there that is all taped up and ready to go. I can put that on my easel, paint on that and get a result. The alternative is a panel, a masonite panel. Obviously, these have got a little bit more weight to them. So if you're only going out for one session, you can take one or two of these without incurring too much weight. I often work on smaller ones outside because outside you need to be fast and everything is changing so quickly that you don't want to get over ambitious necessarily with a very big picture. This is probably the largest I would ever go outdoors. These are 16 by 20 and this little 11 by 14 is a very comfy size for being outside. You can just make nice sketchy notes on a thing this size which you can then work up into a bigger picture in the studio if you want to later. So what you're aiming for when you go outdoors is things that are easy to carry, lightweight, that will allow you to get out into nature and get on with the business of capturing it. So let's pack all this stuff up and head out. Luckily, trains don't run on this line at the moment, so we can use it. I love the look of these country churches, but it's hard to get a good viewpoint on this one. Driving under the bridge, looking for a spot, I realise that this view from the bridge itself could be ideal. I'm hitting the darks in the trees first to lock down the edges of the buildings, knowing I can overpaint the lights in a while. It's important to establish your eye level immediately painting outside. Here, much of my subject is below mine and my eye level is actually about halfway up that steeple. The light is going to be changing fast and there's so much in this scene, so I want the lights and dark masses in here fast to set my scene. As you can see, the view is partially obscured by foliage and the power lines cast ugly shadows. A photograph would include all this, but in a painting I can leave them out. Painting is always a process of selection, so you get to chop and change things. You can leave stuff out when you want to. And if something's ugly, don't paint it. You know, if it's beautiful, make it bigger, put it in. There's, man, there's lots of detail to get right in this one. This church is a private home now. There hasn't been a service here in years, but the departed still sleep peacefully in the churchyard. Now I'm finding more precise shapes in the foliage, playing light areas off against darks in the building. The road drops away to the small wooden bridge at the bottom. These small details create an accurate impression of the architecture without getting overly tight. A 
Now I roughly indicate the fence and wall that contain the churchyard. It's this strong shape that leads your eye into the church itself. Man, it's hot. Sun's high now. Time to make sure these shapes are crisp. Here you can see that I loosely indicated the road in front of the churchyard below me, tidied up the tree at the right and took the painting out to the edges of the panel. This feels good for about an hour and a half's work, enough to make me think I may do a more finished version another time. Mm -hmm.